Hey there, everybody. So I just came back from a weekend-long hiking trip. Because this is a thing I've just decided to do every week. I'm going to go to a new location. Uh, you know, get out and about, freeze in the rain. Hike. When I first saw this in the Houdini showreel, I was like, well, this is something really cool. I would like to make this, but how do I do this? Because in Houdini, these are my current skills and these are not clearly enough to make something like that. Let's do this in Blender. So the effect is made of two parts. There is the core and there is the smoky thing around this core. This was made in a way that, you know, you had this uh, fluid simulation and inside of there, there are like many, many, many particles and each particle is gonna connect to each other like they have some algorithms going on that determine like how are those things connected to each other now doing something like that in blender probably gives you some crashes and nothing in return so instead what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use a Voronoi texture. First we need kind of the primitive object that the core is made of, so in this case this is like a sphere, you know. Then we add the Voronoi texture and a delete geometry node. So this deletes geometry everywhere where we want it to delete. And in our case it's the Voronoi texture with a compare node and this is exactly what we want. Except the original drone core has this uh, like smoothing. In our case this is like sharp. So if you want to smooth this out like Disney does, well what we need is a, another Voronoi texture. Because the problem the problem is that this original one has like a cell, you know, and the cell has circular, uh, not circular, um, linear gradients. And this results in the way that when you use the compare node, you know, this gets like completely super sharp there. Instead, we want to have like a circular gradient from the center to the borders. So what we need to use is a Voronoi F1 texture. Invert this, so we only have like the borders of the gradient. And then we add this to the original distance to edge Voronoi and this results in something like that. But it still looks very bad. We need to make this uh, thick and more like polished in a sense. To make this 3D what we need is a volume to mesh and mesh to volume node. But here's the massive problem. Blender doesn't have a mesh to volume node. It only has points to volume. But because our sphere has a lot of points, I mean a point is just a vertex, we can just use the points to volume and then we can use a volume to mesh node afterwards and this creates a 3D object like this. Now let's add the secret sauce, a smooth modifier and this results in something a lot more smooth. Now we have a playback speed of around 3 frames per second. You don't like playback speeds at 3 frames per second, I think. So let's export this into a file format that every children should know about, .abc alembic. And now the core is ready, just add the second one inside if you want to. I did this and it looks pretty pretty good. Now let's deal with the smoke thing and if you're asking what is the train noise going right down, this is the sound of the sponsor of this video which is Wagon. Let's talk about this in a minute. To create this smoke thing, I didn't know how to make this. I was like, well, what is that? Is that a... is that a... is that what? What? <laughs> what? But the uh, Houdini artist from the last video told me, okay, this actually might be liquid rendered as particles. And this like just clicked in my head because when you simulate with MantaFlow, you have always those blue particles or red if you go very crazy. So let's add a sphere and a quick liquid effect and then let's uh, turn off gravity and let's uh, add some normal flow under the objects and add a force field to keep pulling the liquid back. But then let's also add a turbulent force field to make something, you know, more noisy. I also use a turbulent force field here. You see in this background, this creates this uh, cool looking effect. And now the only thing we need is more particles. So can we increase the resolution? For two reasons, no. First, of course, my computer is gonna melt doing that. And the second reason is that the simulation doesn't look very good in that way. It has to be low res, but it has to have a lot of particles. You need to increase the maximum particle count. And this is where things get really slow. So what I did is, you know, you remember the last foam tutorial. There I used Wagon, which lets you have a powerful computer in the cloud. They are also the sponsor of this video, which is really nice because, you know what, when I was in the parking lot, 
it. <laughs> then I had a friend with a light being like the drone, you know, casting light on the walls and stuff. This was some high budget VFX, of course. And then we had an extension cable. Somebody just stole the extension cable. I mean, suddenly it was gone. Thanks to Wagon, this is not such a financial hit for me. What they actually do is that they have this very cool online service where you have your own computer in the cloud. I want to simulate liquids, so I need a powerful CPU. So you go there, you select, for example, the 48 core Xeon CPU, and you can simulate a lot faster, right? Which is what I used. If you have increased your particle count, the problem is that the simulation is gaining a lot of volume. That's because, you know, the particles, think of those as persons, you know, in a COVID restrictions area. They want to keep distance between them. They want to keep exactly one unit of distance. So you need to tell them, okay, you know, the restrictions are not so strict, you can actually keep less distance between yourselves. And it's very tricky to get right. Either the simulation is gonna like grow massively or it's gonna stay the same, which is the golden sweet spot, or it's gonna like shrink down, which is not what you want either. So you have to play and play and play with this. And if you use Wagon, I mean, you can get a lot faster to the result. Now you're asking, okay, I want to also create a drone. How can I use Wagon? Well, I have a link down there, which uh, gives you access to Wagon for free for some time. So you can test this out, see how this works for you. Just be fast because this is only for the first 50 people. If you're not fast enough, somebody's gonna steal your link as they stole my extension cable. Now we need to render those particles as objects. When you are an experienced Blender artist, you probably are feeling your heart rate like going up and up and up because, you know, 2.7 million particles and Blender usually don't go into the same sentence. We are going to use the most simple 3D object in our universe, which is a triangular pyramid. So make sure your viewport display is points and your render display is the objects. Now this leads quite a lot of VRAM to render out all of those particles. If you have a nice GPU, that's all good. If you don't have one, you can also use Wagon. For the interior of the drone, I added a volume object, just like a volume sphere with a noise texture and then a lamp inside of this with the same hue as the one we used on set, which was 285 degrees. One tip about like VFX render layers is that you know you can overwrite the samples. For example, I had the drone render layer, which rendered pretty fast because it's mostly empty. It just has the drone. But for the environment, for the thing that surrounded the drone, I used uh, 512 samples. So you can do this by going to the override section, override sample count, which is very useful. So this is how you can create a drone in Blender. Remember to try out Wagon and have a nice Christmas time. I mean, this year it seems we actually do have snow. Look at that, look at outside. Anyways, bye, bye, bye.